Shalom and greetings to my brothers and sisters in Master Yeshua the Messiah. Brother Nick here, and today's the seventh day of the seventh month on Elohim's Enoch solar calendar, September 25th, 2020. And this video is new information about the Revelation 12 red dragon sign, how I identified it, and how this sign could be rapidly approaching soon. If you hadn't seen this video before, I suggest everybody check it out. The Revelation 12 sign was called a great wonder in heaven, and after the rapture didn't happen, it left us all wondering. But about a year ago, I gave an interpretation that this sign signaled the arrival of the man-child, who is the end-time Elijah type, and he is the end-time servant of Master Yeshua, the Messiah. I suggest everybody check out this video if they have not seen it. A week ago, I did this video about new information that I found regarding the Revelation 12 sign and how it equals a judgment, specifically the judgment of Babylon, which is coming, the end time Babylon type. But also judgment begins in the house of Elohim, which means judgment is first going to happen on professing Christians. I suggest everybody check out new information pertaining to the Revelation 12 sign video if you haven't seen that yet as well. And just two days ago, I just produced even more new information about the Revelation 12 pertaining to the remnant of the woman's seed. This is imperative that all Christians watch this video. You need to watch this video, and I'm going to leave a link for this video in the description box below. So yesterday I was going to film my video on Yom Kippur and it possibly being a Jubilee year. But instead of filming that video, I stumbled and came across and discovered new information, more new information pertaining to the timing of when the Revelation 12 Red Dragon throws down one third of the stars to the earth. And it could be happening soon. So yesterday, I turned on Stellarium, and this is what I saw, and I immediately recognized possibly what could be what one-third of the stars that are going to be cast to the earth, and I'm going to explain that in this video. But before I do that, I'm first going to share with you all how Draco Constellation is the great red dragon of Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 and 4. To do that, I'm possibly going to give an identification of the dragon's seven heads. I'm going to take an attempt to do that. But I definitely can identify the dragon's ten horns and I de definitely identify the dragon's seven crowns. And most importantly, like I said, I'm going to identify the possibility of the third portion of the stars that the dragon's tail cast to the earth and the timing of when that event is going to happen. And it could be coming up in the fall festivals. So Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this sign has three parts. We're going to take a look at the great red dragon, the characteristics of this great red dragon, it, and it throwing the stars to the ground. So the great red dragon is almost could be pronounced the great fiery dragon because the word for red is the Greek word pyros, that where you get the word for fire from. But rather, in it's translated in the King James as red. So here's the definition, having the color of fire, red. Okay, so that is something to consider regarding the fiery red dragon. And one of its stars here in its head is this orangish fiery color, and they blink and when you take a look at stars, they're flashing like fire. So that's something to consider when you take a look at blinking stars, flashing stars, they flash as fire. And for that word pyros, it only appears two times in the New Testament. 
And what's very interesting about it, not only does it describe the great red dragon, who's Satan, but it also is the same word used to describe the color of the red horse. So the red horse is the second horse, and that horse is also fiery. More than likely, these verses are connected, and the person that's sitting on this horse is Satan, the, the adversary possibly, who's given this great sword. The red dragon, or the great dragon in ancient Greek astronomy, was identified as Draco. So what you're looking at here is a couple of screenshots from the Revelation chapter 12 sign, 3rd edition, 2017, pages 17 and 18 by Daniel Valles. In this article, he uses a couple of Wikipedia sources that Aratus, who is a Greek, who is a Greek poet from 276 BC, one of his most well-known works, which was called The Phenomena, it's a poem about the constellations. And actually, Paul quoted a, a line from this poem in Acts chapter 17, 28. And he quoted, and in the poem, Aratus, he identifies the dragon, Draco, the horrid dragon, twists his scaly hide. And then it comes down here, swollen is his neck, his eyes charged with sparkling fire. His crested head illuminate, and then and the darts of his tongue barbed with a blazing star. His fiery limbs in the ocean's cooling waves. So that's some of this poem. So the red dragon constellation is Draco, and we still have that constellation today. Here outlined in yellow is the great red dragon. And you might be saying this doesn't look so great. But actually, in real life, the constellation appears huge. And it especially appears huge when its head is close to the horizon. When it's below the North Pole Star, Polaris. So the seven heads of the dragon, I'm going to possibly identify this sign, but I definitely can nail down the two other parts of the red dragon clues in this. Here's a picture of Virgo, the constellation Virgo, with her head. And above her head was a crown of 12 stars. And here is the dragon, and here is its head. Now you might be saying, Nick, there's only one head. But the scripture says seven heads. I agree. But this is where I'm going to try to stretch this one a little bit. But we do know that this constellation from 2,000 years ago, or beyond over 2,000 years ago, this was always the dragon, the serpent. And so when John wrote about this in Revelation, Everybody knew this constellation. So the seven heads, is, it might seem like a stretch, and I would suggest possibly stars. You're going to say, Nick, well, there's only four stars here. But it, I would say that those four stars could represent heads. But what's interesting about these four stars is several of these stars are actually binary stars. So let me go ahead and count these stars in Stellarium. So here I am in Stellarium, and here is the head of Draco. It looks like it's only four stars, but let me go ahead and count you seven. This is a double star. Eltonine is a double star. Rastaban is a double star. Kuma is a single star. And then you have Grumium which is another double star. So two, four, six, seven. So you could argue seven heads that way. Now you might be saying, well, Nick, this is kind of suspect. Well, we know that Draco is the dragon from Aratus's poem and from other texts that are out there regarding ancient astronomy. But what I can do for sure is prove to you the 10 horns of the dragon as well as what I understand, I can also prove to you the seven crowns. So let me show you that right now. So now that I've counted the seven stars for you in Stellarium, now it's about the ten horns of the dragon. And if you look at a lot of uh, artist renditions of dragons over the ages, they all have horns on their spine, on their back sticking out. So it was easy for me to identify the ten horns of the dragon 
it, it would be the 10 stars that make up the dragon's body. Just as you see the horns here on the back of the dragon, these 10 stars would represent the 10 horns. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you have the 10 horns of the dragon. Now, the last part we need to identify is the seven crowns. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, the woman had a single crown of 12 stars upon her head. We know that the crown was the lion constellation with the three wandering stars to make up 12 stars. So using the same example of Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, for chapter 12, verse 3, then a crown equals a constellation. So what we need to do is find seven constellations upon the dragon's head. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you how I, I, I figured that. So again, here is Draco, the great red dragon, outlined in yellow. And here is the September 24th sign of the woman clothed with the sun, with uh, a moon under her feet, with a crown of 12 stars above her head, travailing with child, pain to be delivered. And we have Saturn just lurking right here, which is interesting. Here I circled the crown of 12 stars. It's the constellation Leo the Lion with the three stars, Venus, Mercury, and Mars. And so that is the crown and a crown is a constellation. So the dragon's seven crowns are going to be seven constellations. And it's not going to be made up of these constellations because these constellations are already being used in the story. So I would suggest that these seven constellations would be the constellations that make up the dragon's crown. Here's the dragon's crown. It's kind of flat-headed right here. And as you can see, as you outline this here at the base of this, flatlined as well. So with this seven crowns, you have seven constellations. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you could see how the dragon was waiting to devour the child as soon as it was born. It's basically right next to or right next to the woman and waiting for the child to come out. Now, regarding his tail drawing a third part of the stars and to cast them to the earth, I'm going to share with you that right now. So here I am in Stellarium, and I have it set up a couple of days in advance to October 2nd. 2020 coming up in about a week from now and here so it's almost six o'clock in the evening the sun is setting and this is going to be the evening before Sukkot before Tabernacles and here's Draco the dragon right here the great red fiery dragon is right here this is the North Pole Star so everything's going to rotate about around the North Pole Star and we're looking here's north here's south and you can see the sun is about to set in the west so I'm going to go ahead and play this night out one hour at a time. And what you're going to see, we know that the dragon's tail threw a third of the stars to the earth. So I'm going to go ahead and start playing this, and this is what it's going to look like on this night. So the sun has set, and now the dragon is spinning. And as it's spinning, you can see what's following it here. And there you have it. This is Draco's tail now facing south. And around 5 a.m. in the morning, this is 5 a.m. in the morning on the 3rd, this is what you're going to see in the night sky. You're going to see meteor showers coming from the northern Taurids, the Adromedids, the Autumn Ariatids. The Southern Taurids, the Orionids, the Arugids, and the Sextantids. So this is what you're going to see on the evening as heading into the first day of Tabernacles. Now you're going to be saying, Nick, this isn't a third of the stars. These are just some constellations, some meteor showers coming from various constellations that you see. But what I want to do is now I'm going to put on the equatorial grid. And you can see it has the North Star, the Polaris North Pole Star right here. So each quadrant that you see represents 10 degrees. And so 
it's a complete sphere, so there's 360 degrees, so there's 36 squares, and each square represents 10 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and start with this part of Leo, because these sextantids look like they could shoot forth from here. So I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this whole part of the sky, starting with this quadrant that Leo is in and coming all the way over to this part, this quadrant right here, that's 120 degrees of sky. That's 120 degrees is one third of 360 degrees. So you are seeing a third of the stars, the dragon's tail, kicking a third of the stars to the earth. So I hope you like this explanation of the 120 degrees or the one third of the stars that are being cast to the earth. Very important regarding this one third of the stars, not only does it stop right here at the ecliptic, but there's also stars underneath here. You have Orion, and you have all of these constellations, and I'm sure, and I'm going to be touching base with Orion. You have Cetus, which is the sea beast right here, and then you have the river constellation right here. So I hope you like my interpretation of the third of the stars that are being cast to Earth, the meteor shower that's going to take place in this 120 degrees of sky. Hopefully, this is... This more than likely is the correct interpretation. Is it going to happen this year? I don't know. These meteor showers happen around the same time every year, even on the Gregorian calendar. So this could happen next year, could happen the year after. This would also have happened during the fall festivals in 2017 as well. This is what I understand to be one third of the stars being cast by the dragon's tail to the earth. So I hope you like my explanation of Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. I believe that this is a almost complete understanding of it. I think that the ten horns, I think I nailed it as far as the seven crowns upon his head, just like the constellation Leo was a crown upon the woman's head. So we're looking for seven constellations on top of Draco's head. I think that nailed it as well. And then as far as his tail drawing a third part of the stars, of heaven and casting them to the earth, I believe it's going to be that 120 degrees of sky that you saw that is taking place around Sukkot during the Feast of Tabernacles. I believe that this is a pretty accurate interpretation of it. So hopefully you like my new information regarding the red dragon of Revelation 12. So I'm signing off and shalom to all my brothers and sisters out there who guard the commandments and have the testimony of Master Yeshua the Messiah. Shalom to you.